Welcome back and hello if you are new. So, one of the most influential progressive metal bands of all time, Dream Theater will be unveiling their 14th brand new studio album and Inside Out debut, Distance Over Time. An album that draws from the more simpler things in life, Distance Over Time adopts a back to basic approach both in terms of the writing of the record and the overall sound of the record. You can hear on this album that this is five incredibly talented individuals doing what they do best, and most importantly, having fun. Be it the furious riffing of Fall Into The Light or the more brooding stomp of Paralyzed, Dream Theatre are very much at their heaviest on distance over time. <laughs> Most importantly, however, you can feel that there is this sense of jamming, this sense of kind of cohesiveness within the band, and particularly on S2N, one of the tracks where this, this overall feel really comes through. Amid some of the trickster rhythmic sections, it's even got an Owen Wilson Wow! And you can just tell that the band are having a good time. This for me is Dream Theatre at their heaviest, and not since Train of Thought have I heard the band sound this brutal. And by heavy, I don't necessarily mean, you know, the fact that they're playing on seven strings or the distortion is turned way up. It's this real overall sense of menace that Dream Theatre ooze, particularly on the end of the single Untethered Angel. And when looking at guitar, there are sections on Room 137, which echo the likes of the classic Honor Thy Father, followed by an, a brilliant classic rock-inspired solo from Petrucci, which for me sounds just a slightly bit country, and turns the song on its head. It's also worth noting that Petrucci actually focuses on the individual notes themselves, rather than trying to cram in as many notes as possible in any given second. <laughs> The guitar riffs, although they may be somewhat slower, have this real weight and their sense of purpose throughout the record, particularly working in tandem with Mangini's incredibly weighty drum performance. And his sound, although incredibly hard hitting, allows for the feel to be changed in an instant if the band want to. Not to mention that the final section of S2N features personally my favourite Jordan Rudis solo on the album. With songs not even going over the 10 minute mark, this is somewhat of a miracle for Dream Theatre, and the songs are just better for it. Each of the tracks evolve and are allowed a little bit of a wonder, but don't go on these sprawling 20 minute walks where we not only lose the listener, but lose the sense of what the song really is about. If anything, it proves that we can have the prog epics the likes of At Wit's End and the world-questioning pale blue dot without losing the listener and the singer. These two tracks are your guaranteed fill of good prog epics. Though for me, it has to be the highlight of At Wit's End, a track that's just under 10 minutes long and plays with this idea of a very stop-start riff, but retains that sense of heaviness that I was talking about earlier on, before being transported into just the right amount of technical flair and then pretty much dropping out altogether to just reveal piano, a technique that's also used in Fall Into The Light, following that sort of Megadeth thrash three minute opener, we then moved into that acoustic section before the song slowly but surely builds back up again. And Pale Blue Dot, again, creates that cinematic element that we know and love from Dream Theater, but in a bite-sized, manageable fashion. Though I have to say, and this is pretty rare, the biggest thing for me on this album is the production. I absolutely love the production here. Not only does Myung's bass lines bring the overall weight to Dream Theater's sound on this record, but he really carries the rhythm on here. And I feel that quite a lot of the time he can be sort of forgotten in the mix. You know, for example, the clanging bass of Fall Into The Light really makes him stand out. 
Yet, of course, this fantastic, wondrous atmosphere that's always been part of Dream Theater's sound is ever-present on Barstool Warrior, almost working as a callback to the likes of Six Degrees of Inner Turbulence, and has that very uplifting melody in the guitar lines. And it could be a track that could easily fall into the likes of ballad territory if it wasn't for the song's unsung hero, which is Labrie. Labrie's vocals are the strongest they have been in a very long time, and particularly his runs on At Wit's End showcase why he is seen as such an important voice in progressive metal. Labrie adopts this ballad idea on Out of Reach, which following At Wit's End really kind of works because it gives the album space to breathe, and also showcases Labrie's ability. Dream Theater have created the perfect formula to allow for sprawling instrumental pieces, yet have now bottled it in an accessible, progressive fashion. This is easily one of their strongest albums in the last decade, and you'd be mad if you're a prog fan to miss it. Without a doubt, it's a five out of five. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like and subscribe button. Make sure to check out all my other videos, interviews, album reviews, all sorts of stuff. What do you think of the band in 2019? I'd love to hear it. Anyway, thanks so much for watching, and I will see you guys next week for another album review. Take care, friends.